Hey, welcome back to New Zealand. Or welcome to anybody who has no idea what's going on here. My name's Sam, and I'm usually riding electric motorcycles, going on road trips, and documenting that whole experience. But in this video, this is actually the first episode of a whole series where I convert this 1994 Honda Beat to electric using Energica motorcycle parts. If you're watching this when the whole series is already done, congratulations, you didn't have to wait five years for me to finish it. For everybody else who's following along in real time, I'm sorry. Anyway, this is the car, a 1994 Honda Beat version Z. I imported it from Japan to New Zealand with the intention to convert it to electric. I spend a lot of time on GooNet, just scrolling through cool cars, dreaming, as you do. But this time I was scrolling to actually buy something. Jen said the Honda Beat was cute, so I had her blessing. And I proceeded to buy the least cute, most race car version of the Honda Beat that I could find. But this was the ultimate, the best beat I've ever seen on GooNet. So I sent a whole bunch of money to Japan, and the car was on its way. It's crazy how easy it is to buy a car from Japan. You just email GooNet and tell them that you want it, and then they send it to you. But I bought this heavily modified car, and I didn't know anything about it. So I spent the next few months using Google Translate, trying to find out as much as I could. This one has a Mugen hardtop, which is super rare and works with the original softtop, so we can have the best of both worlds and still drive it in the rain. This car also has stuff like coilovers, no idea what brand they are. Cool lightweight wheels, a body kit that was discontinued years ago made by a company that no longer exists called Studio Liberta. The roll cage is made by Saito, it has a racing seat by Backyard Special, and I think the exhaust is also Backyard Special. Can I just say how awesome these Japanese tuning shop names are? Like there's one called Cozy Lights and Ducks Garden, yep. With shipping the way it is these days, it just made more sense to buy a car with all the extra pieces that I wanted on it already, instead of buying a totally stock car and then sourcing all those parts later. It just seems like the whole Fast and the Furious overnight parts from Japan isn't really a thing anymore. So the car was being sold by a dealer in Nagoya. Well, here they are on Google Maps, and you can see the beat on Street View. That's my car! So I looked up the dealer on Instagram, Auto Club Denen, scrolled down, and hey, there's my car. At a racetrack! ALT, Auto Land Sukude. Back to Google Maps, Auto Land Sukude. It's a little go-kart track out in the forest, really close to Nagoya. So, Auto Land Sukude, Honda Beat, Google Translate, copy, paste into YouTube. There's a video of my car on that track, and it's going fast. A couple months later it landed in New Zealand and I got to see it for the first time. Unfortunately the compliance guys had to tape the cage out, they had to raise the suspension, basically making it less of a race car than it was. So that was sad, but whatever, I had my own plans for it anyway. Ooh. Now for the conversion part of the conversion, I'm using parts from a 2018 Energica Ego. Is that one of those red Italian things? Yeah. If you don't know what Energicas are, they're the electric motorcycles that started Moto E. This. Energica also makes production street bikes. We have some of those too, and they're freaking awesome. The parts bike I'm using is a little bit older, but what makes these so awesome is that the motors make 143 horsepower and 147 foot-pounds of torque, which is this much in metric, and this battery is the older one, it's the 13.4 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, which is smaller, but it also means that it'll charge fully from 0 to 100 in 30 minutes. So compared to the Beat, I'm over double the horsepower, triple the torque, and I'll still be able to charge fast enough to actually drive it places. Everybody loves a good motorcycle powered K car, right? Well, this time it's from an electric motorcycle. So why convert a car to electric? There are three reasons for me. Number one is always power, but how that power is delivered. Riding electric motorcycles for the past few years has completely ruined me, and so I want that same feeling of acceleration and instant torque in the beat. Reason number two, this is a way to make the car future-proof. Emission standards are getting stricter, gas prices are just going to keep going up forever, and when they start outlawing gas engines or limiting how much power you can make because it pollutes too much, I'll still be able to drive this ridiculous car no matter how much power it makes. And number three, because it's different. You know, you could go out and buy a Tesla like everybody else. We bought a Tesla, Teslas are awesome. But this way I get to choose what car I want to be electric. And I choose this one. So how are we gonna convert this car to electric? What's the plan? Right. 
if you've seen any other video on this channel, you probably know that I have no idea what I'm doing. People email me all the time about their broken zeros asking for help, and I'm like, guys, you gotta understand, I just make videos. Like, I barely know how to ride these bikes, let alone work on them. Which is why, in this situation, I want to keep the bike as intact as possible and just kind of do the drag and drop thing. I mean, there's wiring for 12 volt accessory stuff, so that could go to the power windows and windshield wipers. Maybe I can even use the headlight and brake light wires from the bike to go to the car's lights. Basically make a motorcycle with a car around it. That's the plan. The Energy car. Originally I wanted to keep the transaxle because that's usually how people convert cars on a budget. They just get the classic AC50 motor, make an adapter plate and a coupler, and just bolt them all together. So you get to keep the gears and feel cool with your kung fu shifts. But my engineering buddy convinced me to go a simpler route. Take everything out. Engine, transaxle, gone. Delete. Well, okay, I'll just hide them because I might want to animate these later. The electric motor came from a motorcycle, so let's set it up like a motorcycle. Keep the front sprocket where it is, and put a rear sprocket where the axles are. It'll have to be a bigger sprocket than what's on the bike, because it's a heavier car, and also the bike is geared for 240 kilometers per hour. And I don't need to go that fast in this car. Even 100 is terrifying, so I'll gear it for like 140 or something, so that, you know, when you're going 100 on the highway, it's not totally redlining, and you can still kind of, you know, get decent range. Then I'll connect the sprocket to a beat differential, so I don't need custom axles made, and just bolt it to the subframe in the same place. Then I can just use the chain, same as a motorcycle. So in the end, it'll be a direct drive, no shifting, just the right gearing for the kind of power I want. Also, Energicas have reverse, so I don't really need gears for anything. Charging wise, I'm really excited to have a CCS port, but the problem is, the factory gas cap fuel filler location is too tiny. Man, everything on this car is so tiny. You look at photos of it online and you think, oh yeah, okay, everything's proportional, but it's like shrunken down. Like the door handle is the size of two of your fingers. Then to open the fuel door, you have to open the, the normal door and there's this little knob, which took me so long to find the first time I had to fill up. And see, yeah, there's, there's no way I'm getting a giant CCS plug in here. So I'm stealing this idea from these cool dudes in Japan who converted cars where the license plate flips up and there's a hidden port, all like all, stealthy like how james bond is that all of this might change but at the moment that's the plan i have a whole list of like all the little small things that i have to figure out how they're going to work mostly 12 volt stuff the electronically assisted brakes that's going to be a whole thing getting the speedo to work so that i can get rid of the, the stock beat like the gauge cluster just kind of sits on here really awkwardly which is perfect for me because i can just um I could just mount the energical one there. It's like, it's just like meant to be. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm really excited about this project. Uh, let me know if you are. Um, do the whole like and subscribe, whatever thing, if you wanna just, yeah. I'll just be shooting these videos over the next probably 10 years and um, hopefully we can convert this car to electric. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.